Delighted to be here at Therapy Expo with our partners Vald. They have the leading hardware when it comes to dynamic assessment and measurement of various different clinical tests, that many of which you might have thought would never really be able to get objective data from. We kind of know the subjective importance of various different things, but sometimes just being able to get that data that is then credible to be able to demonstrate to a patient, say limb to limb uh, differences in weight bearing, which we'll be demonstrating, as well as all sorts of different tests that you can do that kind of usually a clinician will say, that looks better than last time, right? Fundamentally, they're guessing. What, we, what we're looking to do today is kind of give a broad, quite loose case study of an OA knee. Let me tell you about someone that's say in their mid 50s, that's a bit of a weekend warrior, thinks themselves sporty, but they're playing squash twice a fortnight, maybe at best and haphazardly. Um, they're getting a bit stiff and they've get, developed what is classically an OA knee. Diagnostically, it's not complicated, but fundamentally their needs, they've, they've let it get grotty. We're six, nine months in and fundamentally their weight bearing shift, we're kind of noticing when they're doing their gait, we've just done observed testing. We know that they're really not loading that knee up, decreased stride pattern, that sort of stuff, right? We know that we might be able to share that with them. We might even take videos and footage, but can we objectify that and then be confident to say that something has made improvements in the right direction when we want it to, right? <laughs> take this into force decks, we now can do just that. So this is Scott from Valve, and he's gonna talk us through Scott, what, when we use the four steps in these sorts of contexts, I've just described that patient, which yep. will probably sound pretty familiar. What's the range of things we might be able to use four steps for, and what would that then tell us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can go right from the basics. So the first one we're going to do, use the center of pressure feature on the four steps. So we're looking at, say, a single leg stand, isolate somebody standing on, yeah, that, you know, that, that grotty knee, as you put it, or the other one. Let's look at how are they actually presenting themselves when they're standing, single leg, what are we seeing in terms of balance, centre of pressure, how they're displaying their weight. So it's obviously very, very basic, very easy to, to perform. We can move that on to the likes of a sit to stand, to, uh, to sit again. So we can use that test as well. When they're seated, when they're, seated they're standing on the four steps, how are they presenting themselves standing up? Right. What sort of, you know, how are they displaying their weight left to right? Are we seeing big asymmetries um, between that left and right, that left and right side? And obviously build that right up to likes of a counter movement jump. So just vertical jump, springing off the, the four steps. What are we seeing when they're taking off and they're landing? Break that down even into the, the individual phases of the jump, concentric, eccentric, just see exactly what we're seeing in terms of left to right and have a look, identify what's going on with that side. Let's get stuck into the test sequence. This is Charlotte Candley going to demonstrate and uh, be our model today. Doesn't look a lot like the middle-aged man I just described, I will accept, but she's going to help demonstrate the force plates for us today. So, first test then, tell us about what we're doing for balance. Yep, so it's going to be a single leg stand. So basically identifying centre of pressure on the plates when you're standing there on a single leg. So there you go, you've got a 10 second counter there. So it's going to count you down. So you want to keep those lines there as tight as possible. We don't want High lots pressure. of movement on there. It's looking pretty good so far. Ah, so we're able to give that feedback in real time. Nice. Exactly, yep. So that's us there, we've got that, that there. We've got uh, data as well we can look at quickly. So like total excursion, how much movement there is in that, that squiggly line you see there, and an area of COP ellipse as well. So if we put your circle around that, what sort of area are we seeing there? Obviously smaller the better. Yeah, if you want to relax there, that's fine. Um, I'll go on to the next rep. We're just going to switch over to that, that right hand yeah, side. Let's go on to the right. So again, we'll get the same cues. We're just going to keep it as was. So again, if you want to step on right, right side first, and again, we can just quickly look at the metrics there. So we can see those metrics in, in real time. We can go and compare the first one to the second yeah, one. Yeah. So I can go back there and see that there. So we can do that, get that live. Exactly, yeah. Get that right exactly. Okay, so yep. just do so, yep. five sit to stands for us. Yep, so just a couple of seconds between each one. We're down, we're sitting, we're standing. So you can see the force trace. Yep, perfect. So it's gone green there, it's picked up that sit to stand to sit. So it's picked that up as a rep, has it? Exactly, yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's just going to go similar to basically Recognize one after the other, recognising these reps. That it's a sit to stand to sit again. You can see the force traces, also right. blue being your left, orange being your right, and then your vertical force above that. Okay. So we get a lot of data there again. Yeah. So what we can see, lots of different metrics. So if we go through, basically scrubbing through that, you've got also your uh, forces as you're standing and you're sitting. You can look at asymmetry as well. So a lot about how a person is presenting as they're standing up and sitting down again. Um, yeah, so asymmetries are probably primarily what we're we'll looking at there and the forces again, also sure. time to stand, time to sit, so how, how comfortable are they actually getting back up and down yeah. from the seat. In circumstances such as this, one of the things that I'm really excited about our partnership with Valve for is because they, unlike many in this sector, aren't then implying that there's a right or wrong or good or bad, right? This is simply oh, yeah. telling us things that we will then integrate into our clinical reasoning. So when we look at that, 
we take it with a pinch of salt. In isolation, what is it telling us? But when you're patching that together with a clinical scenario, you're watching them load up what is a sore knee, shorter stride pattern that doesn't necessarily worsen when we correct some of these variables. We can then train something and retest. So I quite like the fact that this isn't coming with like red, amber, greens on stuff, right? It's not forcing me to try and interpret this. It's giving me the data, trusting me as a clinician in order to integrate it. So really exciting to see how we can bring that together. So on the, on the four steps for jumps, one of the things that's interesting is today we've got our jump rig with us that we're very proud of and it's very useful for expos, etc. And when we're doing performance testing at certain clubs, when we're getting baseline data, it's really helpful. You think about the scenario I've just mentioned about said middle-aged squash player, Realistically, we know that there is a, it is a bit of a leap, excuse the pun, between single leg stand testing, box squat, then up to max vertical. However, we know that that is going to be one of the aspirations. We want to make sure that he's then confidently loading both limbs as he then launches himself north. Also, landing symmetry. How relevant might that be, right? If he's needing to jump and land and if he's avoiding that side, that might not reveal itself on the vertical, it might reveal itself on the landing. So now that we've got both technologies, and can't believe I'm calling that a technology, but we'll go with it, essentially we can then measure that and see, which we know is a bit vague on its accuracy, how much can this then help us to get more insight. So over to you, Scott, get Charlotte yep. to uh, give us a counter movement jump. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So we'll do a couple of counter movement jumps. You want to step on the four stacks away, you're there. Perfect. Oh. Nice. Okay, let's take a little gap between each jump. Might have picked that up, yep. Nice. Nice, nice steady period between them. There we go, should pick up again so we get CMJ picked up each time there. Nice, we've got our metrics alongside that obviously. As it's running, we can cycle through each one. So what we've got, we've got a jump height and it's looking at impulse momentum. So rather than just looking at flight time alone, how long you were off the plates, it's looking at what's happened before you've left the plates and not what's happened you've landed to give you a more accurate reading there in the jump height. So it's been great to be able to put four steps and the utility of them into a clinical scenario as we've described it. However, it's also important to recognise that we've only scratched the surface of the capacity of both the technology and the data we can derive from it that can inform your clinical reasoning tailored to the individual in front of you. So Scott, what else could it do that we've not tested today and what's the breadth of that data? Yeah, so obviously we've gone you know, pretty simple in terms of centre of pressure. We've showed a few metrics on there. We're onto a counter movement jump. We've looked at forces and different phases of the movement, asymmetries associated. You can even look at likes of rate of force development. We have a lot of rate of force development metrics on there. So yeah, producing force, but how quickly you're producing that force throughout different parts of said jump. Um, you can even look at you know more in terms of that. We looked at eccentric duration, but start looking at different durations and different parts of that force trace, um, and obviously like impulse and things as well. So the concentric, eccentric impulse, looking at area under the curve. So again, you know how big is that um, that kind of force time curve um, as we're looking at it? So yeah, like I say, loads of stuff. In Massive area. amounts of stuff. And then, am I right in thinking that then anything that we would test on that, if we were to use any other valid device, it would then be alongside that person's profile, that patient's profile. In, in sequence, really. Right. So you're building a massive uh, database of, you know, of, of data there, so anything that's any sort of valve system that's uploaded to the valve hub it goes alongside, uh, attributed to that profile, so you get a much bigger picture in terms of how that person is presenting. Right, well, no, I'm really excited to see how we're going to start to then develop a larger and larger normative base as well, which is exactly. exciting for us to see, so thanks a lot. So there you have it, that's Valve four steps. I'm really excited to see how that goes as we deepen our partnership with Vald over time. We're going to be producing content to this effect, demonstrating and showcasing products, but also seeing them in the real world, seeing them in clinic, but also seeing them in that high performance environment where, of course, high performance meets MSK, sport and injury, and how this data can be integrated into your clinical reasoning. Hope you can recognize some of these tests in your own clinical practice and see how this technology can enhance it. But also, when we think about how we want to try and do this, that is a tailored, individualized approach of which, of course, you get in touch with Valve, either via us or on your own, and they will help to put it into context as to how it will meet your needs and solve real world clinical pra uh, practice challenges that you will face on a day-to-day -day basis. So do click the links surrounding this video and we look forward to hearing your feedback.